Back on the air at 9.45 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. Today, number 17, and it's the month of September in the year of 2012. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, real quick, once again, public service announcement. If you really want to get the clear, crisp quality of these videos, should you have an interest, uh, I recommend that you use the Google Chrome browser. Uh, for some reason, it connects with YouTube and gives a little bit of a more crisp and concise quality. So if you want to get the game in um, HD, HP, if you want to call it, uh, be sure to use Google Chrome. As far as the phones, some of y'all are on. Uh, I have to do some more research on that. But if you're on the net, as far as your PC, go ahead and uh, open up the Google Chrome browser and get the ism in the highest quality possible. So today's subject matter, moving right along, is something that I believe is of importance. But before we even speak on it, I just want to make this little point to say the website and the online publication is pimphop.com. And contrary to popular belief, there are some people that would see perhaps a bit of a confusion like why is something like education being featured on uh, pimphop.com? Education, religion, we supposed to be talking about. Uh, the pimping in the game. Well, what we we're actually talking about is the truth, and the truth is self evident. And as I sit on this internet and observe uh, a lot of you young ladies and some of the fellas too, I notice that many of us do have children. That's one thing about social media is it gives a peek into a person's real life, whether they know it or not. So people do have children, and children are a part of life. I mean, we're regular people. We do what regular people do. So we can just use our resources and have that available. So keep that one simple. Go give some information in regards to education and keep it in pimphop.com fashion and allow you to uh, form your own analysis and use what the good Lord gave you. Not your backside, but your top side. You can make them both fall in alignment and uh, see if you get better results. So what I'm going to do right now, give me just a second. Start with the facts. Facts in regards to the news. Some people, I mean, just give me the facts. Let me make my own analysis. Quit putting your own spin on it. Just about every news outlet that you can imagine, what you might think is giving you the facts has actually got a spin on it. But it's about as close as we can get to the pure are the organizations that release the press information, and then you can put your spin on it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it to you via Reuters. It's Reuters and AP Associated Press. And, uh, then we can go from there. So let's go ahead with this news feed. Chicago mayor goes to court over teacher strike by Greg McCoon, Chicago, Monday, September 17, 2012, at 9:03 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So that was uh, let's see, nine eight seven six. That was about three hours ago. So this is fresh off the presses, taking place right now as we speak. Reuters. The confirmation between striking teachers and Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel moves to court on Monday where lawyers for the mayor will seek to end the walkout in President Barack Obama's home city just weeks before the November 6th U.S. election. The despite I'm oh, sorry, the dispute between Emmanuel, a former top White House aide to Obama and organized labor, had appeared close to a resolution on Sunday when Chicago teachers union leaders recommended to a meeting of union activists that the strike be suspended. But a majority of the 800 or so union delegates Weary of promises made by Emanuel and Chicago Public Schools, ignored the leadership 
and extended the week-long strike until at least Tuesday. Emmanuel immediately issued a statement saying he would go to court to try to have the strike declared illegal. His lawyers are expected to file the challenge in the local Cook County Circuit Court on Monday. Emmanuel's move took the dispute into uncharted territory. No injunction request has been filed in an Illinois education labor dispute since the state gave Chicago teachers the right to strike in 1984. Some 29,000 public school teachers and support staff have been on strike since September 10 over Emanuel's demand for sweeping education reform. From the beginning of the strike, the mayor has said the issues in dispute, teachers' performance evaluations and giving school principals more authority were not covered by the state law allowing the teachers to walk out. Strikes in the United States usually are over wages and benefits, but Emmanuel is offering an average pay raise of more than 17% over four years, which the union accepts. It was unclear how parents of the 350,000 of the children out of school will react and how union members will respond to Emmanuel's legal move. Opinion polls last week showed Chicago voters supporting the union, but that could change as the strike drives on. While Knowles, who has four children in Chicago public schools, said he has been fortunate because his two oldest children in high school could take care of the younger two. Quote, I'm very upset, he said of the strike. Quote, I'll be patient with the union and see what they try to work out, unquote. The mayor's negotiators and the union had worked out a compromise agreement on Friday that they hoped would end the strike. As part of the deal, Emmanuel backed off some of his demands on teacher evaluations, agreeing to phase in the use of student testing to review teachers and dropping his insistence on pay based on merit. The showdown has highlighted a national debate over how to improve failing inner city schools. Like Chicago, many major city school districts are losing students to the suburbs and have a high percentage of children from low income households. Emmanuel believes that the best way to improve the schools is to set higher standards for teachers and to close local former schools and replace the staff. The union wants cities to invest in traditional neighborhood schools and teacher training rather than close them down. Many of the children affected live in poor and crime-ridden neighborhoods and need more support to succeed, the union says. Chicago teachers mistrust Emmanuel and the school district because scores of schools have been closed in recent years. They say they fear Emmanuel will close up to 20% of Chicago schools once the strike ends, which would lead to mass layoff of unionized teachers. They accuse Emmanuel of trying to privatize public education by allowing outside groups to run some charter or contract schools outside the union for finance with public funds. The dispute has become personal with the union leader Karen Lewis calling Emmanuel a bully and a liar. Racial tensions has been a backdrop with the union saying a disappropriate number of black teachers have been laid off as schools are closed. Additional reporting by Renita Young, Peter Bohan, and Mary Wisniewski. Editing by David Story. So that's the news. Uh, spoken in whatever you call, translating it into word via pimphop.com, via Reuters. 
Now, let's get into the discussion and look at what was just said so we can get into the nitty gritty of the matter. Uh, <laughs> straight from parent. While Niles, who has four children in Chicago Public Schools, said he has been fortunate because his two oldest children in the high school could take care of the younger two. I'm very upset, he said of the strike. Quote, I'll be patient with the union and see what they try to work out. Pick out the parent because in general, uh, that's who determines what the end result will be ultimately. Uh, Rahm Emanuel, for those of you who are familiar and some who probably are not, uh, just a few years ago, not too long ago, he was working at the White House as the Chief of Staff for current President Barack Obama. So they're uh, pretty tight homies. And he was recently elected to the Chicago mayor position by a majority of the voters. So when they voted for Rahm Emanuel in the office, they actually voted his policies. And he's pretty much known as a take no bullshit kind of guy. To the extent where he will say, I don't take no bullshit, use those exact words and stand by them. Uh, get the job done type of individual, take no shorts. So his stance is to raise the pay rate for the teachers along with raising the quality of the teacher standards. Higher pay, higher standards. Uh, less is more. Quality versus quantity. That's the angle that I see. We want less quality but better quantity. And kids going out to uh, suburban schools, having them get the same quality of education in the inner cities. Uh, upgrade the schools, make some new ones, make some charters. I mean, the, the facts probably can go on for, for days. Uh, the union and the teachers are saying that they basically feel like he is um, putting them at a disadvantage by having them have to step their standards up, especially because uh, they're so great of a percentage of African American teachers where if you were to go to the suburb, chances are they're not talking about uh, African American or minority teachers' jobs. Caucasian people jobs. I would question if whether or not it's really a matter of race and ethnicity versus teaching skills and abilities and who can do the job the best to give the students the best quality of education that they could possibly offer. So getting to the meat of the matter, which is where our own thoughts need to come in, do you think that the parents are upset for the strike due to the fact that the kids are not being educated or due to the fact that it's going to cost some additional child care funds perhaps to the extent where some parents I need to talk to some people in Chicago that I'm familiar with might need to stay home and um, I don't know, maybe take some time off and take some pay off too because off work, off pay, you got to dedicate that time or that money to additional child care costs. So the bottom line is, are we sending the children to the schools for education or are we sending the children to school for child care? and which one should take the highest priority. Economic recession in all, uh, do we want to be sending our children to school just for the sake of having a place to go that's uh, free child care while we earn a wage and pay the rent, pay the 
car note, pay the lease, uh, have our Starbucks and shopping money, so on and so forth, typical middle class package. The reason I mention that is because that's right now, but I think Rahm Emanuel is pretty much looking out for the future. And one of the primary ways to success and upgrade in class is through education. And logically speaking, if the teachers are slackers, well, chances are the students will show up with some slacker tendencies as well. But slackers and all, it still acts as a free place for some free child care. So it's going to boil down to the parents. Whether the parents are going to act as slackers, uh, work a regular job, and have the students, um, can I say that? Have the students have some free child care so they can perhaps uh, repeat the process when they become of age? Or are you going to uh, make that little sacrifice? Am I going to make that little sacrifice? in the name of the children getting a better quality of education so that they can live a better quality of life. Once again, I'm not one to judge because everybody has their particular thing to deal with, including me myself. But just to add value to what we're doing and keeping it human, but to bring the subject up for debate and uh, let each of us ponder yonder and see what works best for us. So with that said, uh, it's MightyMightyPimpHop.com, Intergalactic Media Conglomerati, cover all bases, and uh, we stand up for what's best for the children. Alright, deuces.